to do inside my primary case and I'll show you as I do that but going into the primary case is going to open up to be able to show you guys how to do some other stuff uh, change your cha uh, test and change your stator out do a pickup tube and pull your tranny if you haven't had your transmission updated yet it's all s I'm just gonna run through it um, I'm not gonna pull my transmission but I'll get you through all the difficult parts and the rest of it will be easy uh, and I'll explain the, the rest of it in best details I can. Um, so that's where we're at. I'm wearing a red t-shirt, which is highly unusual for me. I'm usually a black t-shirt guy or a gray t-shirt guy. And it's our fundraiser for the Scooter Cannonball. Me, Dennis Bennett, and Ken Bratz, we're all Excelsior Henderson guys, are going to do the Scooter Cannonball, which is an event uh, cross country uh, from California to North Carolina coming up in June. And so we've been raising funds trying to keep the cost down for us. Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be an ordeal. It's going to be a little bit of money, not near as much as the antique cannonball, obviously. Anyway, these t-shirts are on, for sale on the GoFundMe page. Uh, you can search Team Fat Jesus, just like the logo says and you can make a donation there for 30 bucks and you'll get this t-shirt delivered to your door uh, be sure to include your size and your address when you message dennis dennis is uh, handling the t-shirts we also got some really cool stickers uh they've been selling pretty good um uh, running about 10 bucks a pop yeah i got one over here if you want one of those contact me or dennis and that's this sticker here I'm not trying to raise funds for this channel. I'm just trying to raise funds for the can, uh, scooter cannonball. Uh, so we can have, have a little adventure between three old guys. We'll be fine. Um, I'll turn you back on a second once I get organized. Hey. All right. <clears throat> so these are the steps to test in your stator and then um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the primary off. Like I said in another video, I'm pulling the primer off because i got other issues in there I need to look at. So to test your stator, uh, my battery is junk so I got a charger on it but it's nice to know where you're at on a base with the battery. Bike's not running. Turn it over to volts. And this would be DC, and that curvy little line right there, hopefully you can see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Curvy little line there means uh, AC, so we want DC, so I gotta hit select. Now the curvy line is a straight line. Being I got a battery tender hookup, I can hook on right out here and that'll tell me the battery or give me close enough. Ouch! I think I just blew the fuse. Summon a gum. No, I did not. My battery is weak, and like I said, so it's showing 12.7. Next, we want to do is start it. We want to make sure it's charging at least 
13 volts, at least. If it isn't, then we get issues elsewhere. So I'm gonna start it, and then we'll put the voltmeter back on the battery, and then uh, on the battery tender again. I got the charger back in there just so make sure it starts. I'm sorry about that. I just haven't got the gumption yet to go out and buy a brand new battery yet. Uh, so I'm gonna start the bike, put the voltmeter on here, and at this, at um, DC, volts DC, it should be reading at least 13 volts, if not more. Uh, should be around 13.7 to be truthful, to be actual. She's climbing, So we're running really good on bolts. Um, almost 14 bolts on charge running. All right, nice charge. Like I said, uh, we did good there on the test. Um, if you didn't, if you don't have that, then you gotta go on to your voltage regulator test, um, and that's gonna pin down whether it's a voltage regulator or if it's the stator. And more than likely, it's gonna be the stator. I've only seen one voltage regulator go; they're transistorized. So this is uh, this is the lead from the <clears throat> from the stator going to the voltage regulator. That's the voltage regulator. This is the plug that unplugs it. And this is the wires coming out of the stator, and they run down under here and come out through here. So Wow, is that hot? Oh, it's because it's charging hard. I forgot. Okay, this took a long time to get this connector undone. I, I, it was awful. It's probably mostly because I haven't taken a part file. Oh, look at that. It's probably because it's been getting hot. Wow. All right, well, there's a, a voltage regulator out there, folks, that doesn't do like ours. Ours is, um, our voltage regulator is the shunt type, this thing here. This 
this is the voltage regulator and I just connected just disconnected the voltage regulator from uh, the stator and as you can probably see there that stator is pretty crispy that's nuts <laughs> um, anyway our stators charge all the time it's it it shunts voltage back through the frame and some people in the community believe that's uh, an issue why our bikes run so hot it's because the stator gets hot I'm no electrical engineer I couldn't tell you if that's true or not uh, looking at this I'm thinking I may want to switch over to that new type or different voltage regulator so this doesn't get so hot now did this get hot because there was a crack in this plug or did it get hot because it's charging hard my battery's junk who knows but we're going to do the second test second test um, the first test we test the battery and uh, not running and then running running it's showing over 14 volts so my stator is charging as crispy as this all looks here man what a mess as crispy as that all looks in there and it all um i may have to get a new plug some kind of three-way change that out to this out um anyway i tested off here off my battery minder uh if you don't got a battery minder uh you test right off the pulls off the battery non-starting you should be 13.7 volts running it should be running over 14 volts easy and mine's running over 14 volts sitting my battery's junk and i proved that so next step is to determine if your issue if it failed both those tests is is it the voltage regulator this here device man everything's not working my hands don't work good today the voltage regulator is it is it the issue or is it the stator so we're going to do the next test and on this next test we're going to be going to um, AC because there's a, it's a three phase stator in here so we'll go to voltage and it's curly see the curly line that means AC and what we're going to do once I start it um, I'm going to be plugging in to any one of these any two of these plugs there's one here one here and one here and I'll go completely around all four all three positions and plug them all in hopefully I can get something out of this, this that looks really bad Wow um, and uh, what you're looking for is that at revs you're looking for about 60 volts AC that looks pretty good So this is that uh, voltage regulator to stator connection, all crispy, real crispy. I cut it off, it's bad. Uh, I had a few uh, extra old stators I just robbed off and spliced in a new lead right here. As you can see, I wouldn't be trying to save this oil if it wasn't for the fact that it's uh, so expensive. And 
I just changed it not a hundred miles ago, like I said. So I'm gonna put it in here. A from the primary, and all the oil will sit on the other side of the crankcase. I'm here by myself, so I'm, I'm doing it this way for, for that reason. I, I can't tip it over and do all this same time. Um, you can just tip it away, and I've done that in the field, uh, especially when you got like five or six guys standing around watching the world famous field changing out of a stator. <laughs> Uh, poor shot. And I have done it once. Well, I've done it twice in the field. I did it in Sturgis one year. And then uh, one year uh, I did it at uh, Junction City, Kansas for the Cannonball. You probably notice I'm really big about containers. I got all kinds of containers all laying around everywhere. And that keeps my parts straight. I gotta get all these uh, hot toppers off. Uh, I've missed a, some more to come off of this side. I'm, I'm just gonna have to get hold of McMaster car and get some of their stainless steel ones instead of these silly plastic ones that fall off. And here's why they fall off, they crack, as you can see. Look better than that thing anymore. Gonna have to get a new battery. Hopefully everybody's following along, figured out the stator test so far. Uh, test the battery dead or not running. Just a make a line or a base so you know where you're at. Running, it should be running around 14 volts at the battery with the voltmeter. And if those two fail, then you need to determine if it's the val uh, voltage regulator or the stator. And the way to do that is to pull the plug out of the voltage regulator to the stator pull that plug and it'll be three phase and uh, you got to test across all three phases and at 3000 rpm you want 60 volts AC whereas when you're on the battery you're testing DC Alrighty. I changed these out. These are normally uh, button heads. I put a uh, regular Allen head in there because I hate button heads, and especially on Excelsior Hendersons. You're going to find that uh, they strip really easy, especially if they've used some orange Loctite on them. These here are supposed to be button heads too, I believe. It's been so long I don't remember anymore. All right, what I'm doing here is um, I'm taking the cover off the clutch, clutch, clutch adjuster. The clutch adjuster um, is this here. And uh, I gotta take it off. I gotta take this clutch adjuster off to get the primary off, because this is all ran by a... Uh, that's graphite, what's that doing there? Anyway, I gotta run the, uh, I gotta undo this. Now, if I don't do that, you can't pull the primary out. You gotta get these two nuts off, that's all there is to it. And that's a half inch. with a flat end screwdriver. There you go. 
and you're going to have another nut inside. This is the lock nut that holds your adjustment when you put it on. all the way in so that screw so that nut pops out of there and then your clutch and adjuster will be free well your yeah your clutch or your and or adjuster whatever you call it will be free of the primary case and there you go clutch now is Is now free of the primary. This is straight to the clutch was it back here. So we're going to start taking these guys out next. Um, now there is some debate. Depends who you are or how lazy you are. This line down here, that's a break, uh, that's the clutch line for this slave cylinder. This is the slave cylinder. This is the line to it. I used to undo this so I could take the cover and get completely away from the site of where I'm working and I'd make more room. My bike uh, can be a real pain in the ass to bleed. Uh, the slave cylinder, bleed it and make it work again. I have spent uh, two hours bleeding it and then the next time it'll bleed within 15 seconds. No, I'm not doing anything different. It's just one day it's good and one day it isn't. Some X's are bleed clutch slave cylinders really, really easy. Some do not. Mine it does, normally does not. So I'm leaving this on. And then I'm going to take a piece of wire and tie this primary case just up here so it sits. Uh, it'll be out of the way for what I want to do. And uh, anything you want to do, stator, uh, transmission, clutch, or the pickup tube. For all three of those items, you can just, it, it, it's going to be out of the way. You'll see. Part of the stator is a magnet that mounts on this primary right about here. No, the magnet mounts on the crank actually. The stator mounts on the case. And um, this case pulls hard off and goes on scary hard. If you're not used to it, it'll actually bite your fingers if you're not if you're not prepared for it now the way I usually do this is I get something long handled That's Magnet I'm fighting, folks. Got her. All right. And it survived. Cool. What's the tight one? What's this? And a piece of wire.
So, okay. So here's your stator. And um, this one's a little coked up. This should be, it is still good, it's still working. Um, see that? I mean, that's getting hot there, and I don't know why. It might have something to do with that plug-in shorting across. That'd be my guess. This is a easy replacement. Uh, as you remember, the wire comes in the top of the case here, and uh, that's not stock. I had I had that made. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. And you just take these three screws out. Now it has to be clocked or turned perfect on the underneath. Those holes will line up incorrectly or not not right. You make sure when you get these three screws back in that you're clocked right because the lead, this, this is the wire is the lead, has to be positioned perfectly over here. Another issue with the stator, you want, <laughs> I can't see. This is the magnet on the crank that spins and makes electricity off of the, these coils. This here has to be back all the way against the primary. If not, she'll rub here against the side and actually eat a hole in it and take out the stator. Uh, some of the guys have learned that the hard way. I have not. I got lucky once. I was back in for some reason. That might have been during my puking issue. Um, and I found that that was too high. Now, the factory clip that holds the wire here is not this. This is something I had made up because I didn't like the factory clip. It doesn't hold anything, and so I didn't like it. So a buddy of mine made this for me. I'll show you what the it's supposed to look like. All right, that's this piece here. See? And there's a shelf in there. That the wire sets on. Right there, see that shelf that's building the building this primary case. And this is supposed to hold it this clip, factory clip, goes here, and it's supposed to hold the wire on this shelf and hold her firm. Well it doesn't. It it just floats around and moves and you tighten as much as you want. You gotta be careful because you could strip out the threads, blah blah blah. What I have designed here holds it down and against the cover of the primary, the outer edge of the primary. I don't want that to float around. I'll be buying some more pumps. Um, so I had this made. Uh, it's a real simple design. It works great. And that's what this looks like now. It's a pretty easy piece. Put them back.